Good morning, isn't this nice? We've actually got human beings in the room with, with us today, and thank you to those who are joining remotely as well. And a pleasure to have you here today. Also a pleasure to have with me today the uh, recent recipient of uh, Manitoba's Order of the Buffalo Hunt, Dr. Brent Rusin. Brent, thank you so much for all your work, and, and to your team, of course, thank you as well. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, and we'll keep saying it until everybody does it. Vaccines are our safest and only way out of this pandemic. Vaccines are our protection against the fourth wave. Vaccines are our protection against future lockdowns. Vaccines are how we get our lives back. And I want to commend the hundreds of thousands of Manitobans who've participated in our truly historic vaccination efforts thus far. Thank you to you for your willingness to do your part. Uh, roll up your sleeve not once but twice and protect yourself and protect your fellow Manitobans. Protect our businesses too, our small business community. Protect our economy. And uh, to protect our communities and our healthcare system as well. To date, we've had nearly uh, 2 million vaccinations, 1.9 plus administered in Manitoba. Um, more than 81% of Manitobans have received at least one dose. Uh, almost 76% of Manitobans are fully vaccinated. And a few months ago, Brent, I think we would have hoped that that would have put us in a state of protection and safety, but such is not the case with the, the new and emerging variant threats that we have to face. It's a significant accomplishment. We are leading the country and Manitobans deserve to be very proud of their collective efforts, but there is more work to do, and it is this work that we want to address today with some of our comments. We have to understand that Manitoba is not an island. We, we understand right now that the COVID numbers here are very low compared to uh, most other jurisdictions in Canada, but we've seen this before, and we, we are watching case counts climb in other jurisdictions around us and we are hearing projections that are dire. Experts are saying that the fourth wave uh, will be an even greater threat in terms of its numbers of cases uh, than the third. Um, we've seen this pattern before. In a general sense, Manitoba has delayed the onset of each wave, but when it has come, it has hit us intensely. And so we want to avoid a repeat. We don't need to see this rerun again. We need to get to higher ground to avoid the tsunami. And as we prepare for the fourth wave of the pandemic in the new school year, it is critical that we do everything we can to get all Manitobans who are eligible, fully vaccinated, and protect those who cannot get vaccinated as well, such as our young people. This is why today we're announcing that all frontline provincial employees who work with vulnerable populations must be fully immunized by October the 31st or undergo frequent COVID-19 testing. This includes healthcare providers, educational and early learning, early learning and child care providers, public servants and agencies who work in high risk, risk settings, and Manitoba justice officials who work with vulnerable people and in correctional facilities. As a government, it is our expectation to lead by example. We will require all government staff in the Manitoba Legislative Assembly to follow these policies that will include MLAs. All designated public sector workers will be required to be fully immunized and provide proof of vaccination or undergo frequent COVID-19 testing in order to ensure the safety of their workplace and the people they serve. It should go without saying, but I will say anyway, these employees work directly with and for the people of Manitoba, and there is nothing more important than protecting the safety of the people of Manitoba and the security of our communities. As an additional protection measure against the rising Delta variant and a possible fourth wave, we are also announcing today that we are requiring mandatory mask use in all indoor public places. As well, later this week, details will be uh, provided on the expansion of the list of activities, services, and places that will only be accessible if individuals are fully 
vaccinated. In other words, we're strengthening the value of being vaccinated and the utility of the Vax Pass in our province. Discussions are underway. Uh, Dr. Rusin will be sharing the updated details of this information later this week, before the end of this week. Um, with that, I'll pass it over to you, Brent, and uh, Dr. Rusin will provide more information to us. Well, thank you, uh, Premier. I'm Brent Rusin, Manitoba's Chief uh, Provincial Public Health Officer. And so, uh, just to start, I want to extend my thanks to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Premier, uh, throughout this pandemic um, for uh, working with public health and uh, listening to public health advice and to uh, enact measures that are there to really uh, protect the health of Manitobans. So, uh, appreciate uh, working with us on that. Um, public Health has been advising uh, Manitobans uh, for many mon months now on the value of being vaccinated. It's the best way to protect yourself, those around you and, uh, and our province. Uh, we've also been advising Manitobans that the Delta variant uh, poses a threat to us and, uh, and certainly can see now that a, a fourth wave is inevitable here in, in, in Manitoba. Um, what isn't inevitable is what that fourth wave could look like. Um, we do have 75% of eligible Manitobans have received their first and second doses. So again, this has been quite an achievement um, for Manitobans and for the Vaccine Implementation Task Force. Uh, so quite uh, encouraging, uh, but unfortunately with Delta, it's, it doesn't go far enough. Our vaccine rate is not rising uh, quickly enough. Uh, the increased transmission of Delta variant uh, we can see can lead to a rapid rise in cases, um, which again puts stresses on the healthcare system and critical care capacity. Uh, so this healthcare system strain uh, doesn't only affect those with COVID, it affects all Manitobans. Manitobans uh, requiring other type of healthcare. Uh, so it's in our best interest to keep these COVID numbers down. And the best way for that is for us to practice fundamentals which includes being vaccinated as soon as you're eligible. Uh, we know that uh, if our healthcare system goes over capacity, we're at risk of needing to find uh, critical care capacity uh, again elsewhere, uh, including outside of the province. So we need to do whatever we can to uh, limit the chances of that. So today's announcement, uh, these new public health orders uh, comes in response to these increasing concerns um, with uh, uh, the fourth wave uh, projections, what we're seeing in other uh, jurisdictions uh, around our nation and, and other nations. Uh, so the new public health order will require all provincial employees who work with vulnerable populations to be fully immunized uh, with two doses of COVID-19 uh, by the end of October or undergo regular testing. So mandatory immunization requirements for all provincial employees um, and, uh, and uh, public servants who have uh, ongoing contact with the vulnerable populations, which include uh, direct health care providers and workers, including but not limited to physicians, nurses, allied health professionals, support services staff and others. Education workers, including teachers, school and education support staff, uh, bus drivers and custodial staff. Uh, early childhood education workers, including staff and practicum students, uh, public servants and funded agency employees who work in congregate residential settings or work with vulnerable populations, enter the home of clients or visit sites with vaccine mandates, um, and uh, Manitoba justice employees who work with vulnerable people and in correctional facilities. The order does not require vaccination as a condition of employment, but rather employees will have a choice between being fully vaccinated and providing proof of that vaccination status or undergoing frequent uh, COVID-19 testing uh, in order to work. Um, so those designated employees who are not fully immunized or who cannot provide proof of vaccination uh, must submit to covid 19 testing regularly and so for a full-time employee this could be up to three times per week and uh, uh, along with that um, uh, a negative test result is, is required 
Uh, so all affected staff will be required to be fully immunized with two doses of COVID-19 by October 31. Remember that to be fully immunized, you must receive two doses of the vaccine uh, and two weeks have passed. So um, that means uh, people who haven't received a dose yet need to do so as soon as possible. We need to wait that 28 days before the second dose, plus you need two more weeks after receiving your second dose to be considered fully vaccinated. So we've seen the effects of lockdowns and school closures on people across Manitoba, and we know this has a significant negative effects, uh, especially on our children. Uh, our kids are heading back to class soon, and this mandatory vaccination requirement is just another layer of protection uh, to ensure we can keep our kids back in school and keep them there safely. Um, educators want their classrooms to be safe as possible uh, and parents are placing their confidence uh, in schools uh, to keep their children safe uh, while they learn. And so by requiring these uh, individuals who are working with vulnerable populations to get immunized, and uh, continue to follow the fundamentals, we can protect those most at risk of COVID-19 um, as uh, the uh, Delta variant uh, is approaching us. And really to, to avoid a full lockdown. Uh, in previous waves, really the, the lockdown, the uh, intense public health restrictions were uh, really our only tool. Uh, now we have a much better tool and that's vaccination. Uh, so with uh, increases in our vaccine uptake, uh, we can do whatever we can to avoid uh, further lockdowns. So we believe that uh, this public health order will align with and support Manitoba's uh, priority to provide uh, uh, immunization opportunities uh, to every eligible Manitoba. Uh, so Manitoba public, uh, public Service staff will have until September 7 to get a first dose. Um, and then uh, by mid-October uh, to get that second dose so they have two weeks past their uh, second dose to be fully immunized by October 31. Uh, so people are strongly encouraged to book appointments uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we're recommending that private businesses and organizations follow the province's lead and consider mandating COVID-19 vaccination for their employees to protect their staff, protect their customers. Um, this will reduce the chances of outbreaks in the workplace setting, which we've seen um, uh, many examples of in previous waves. Uh, we, public health is still requiring uh, businesses to report cases, uh, and public health will still be um, uh, considering the, the temporary closure of businesses that have outbreaks uh, in them. Uh, so we really uh, suggest that you do what you can to have very high vaccine uptake in your places of business to avoid such, uh, such issues. Uh, we're also bringing back uh, the mandatory mask uh, the mandate for indoor public spaces. Uh, in addition, we'll be releasing an updated list of facilities, events and services uh, that will require persons uh, that are, are attending to be fully immunized um, and we'll be doing that in the coming days. So our case uh, counts are remaining stable for the time being, but we can see what's happening in other jurisdictions. Uh, we know that that fourth wave is, is heading in our direction and uh, vaccine uptake, uh, vaccine uh, credentials, uh, the fundamentals are our best way uh, to limit the impact of that fourth wave. Uh, some more details and the complete uh, public health order will be released uh, as decisions are finalized. Uh, but I encourage all Manitobans who have not yet done so, um, book those vaccine appointments. Um, and again, by requiring the people working with vulnerable populations to get immunized, wear masks, and expand that use of the vaccine passports, uh, we can protect those most vulnerable uh, to uh, of COVID-19. And what we can see in other jurisdictions that this is now a pandemic, largely of the unvaccinated. And we have to make sure that does not lead to um, adverse health effects for, for all Manitobans. We want to protect all Manitobans from the fourth wave. Uh, so again, by working together, practicing those fundamentals and getting vaccinated, it's our best way to uh, decrease the effect of this uh, fourth wave in Manitoba. So uh, thanks uh, to all Manitobans, and I'm going to turn this back to uh, the Premier. Thanks very much, Dr. Rusin. I should mention also that uh, I was honoured earlier today also to present the Order of the Buffalo Hunt to uh, Lynette Siragusa, the head of nursing and 
thank uh, her and her team as well for their tremendous work throughout this pandemic, which is not over, which is ongoing. And to them and their families, to Dr. Rusin and Lynette, to their families particularly, who have taken on uh, such onerous responsibilities. I know when they took them on, they didn't know they'd be this onerous. But we thank you for, for taking them on during this especially challenging time in Manitoba's history and Canada's history. We believe very strongly that this is the best way to protect our children, protect those who are vulnerable in our province who cannot protect themselves. This is the best way to protect our business community and our economy, to protect our communities. Uh, we led the country when we created a secure uh, Manitoba Vax card. Other jurisdictions, BC followed us yesterday in their announcement. Uh, Quebec has followed us earlier um, because we believe that the added benefit to those who have done uh, their best uh, by rolling up their sleeve not once but twice to get a vaccine uh, is a good thing to be rewarded and we want to make sure that we continue to have those vax numbers um, rise but we want them to rise faster than they've been doing lately. Our vax cards giving every immunized Manitoban uh, the right to travel safely across Canada and it'll now be your passport to doing even more and that'll be announced later this week. And we have, with our community initiatives, our uh, promotions, our incentivization through things like the scholarships for youth that were reported on yesterday, I think, uh, uh, we've endeavoured to encourage folks to go and get vaccinated and we are supporting every opportunity to uh, give every Manitoban uh, the chance to roll up their sleeve not once but twice because that is what we need everyone to do. Uh, so I would say also that uh, to all of those who have done this, who have gone and got vaccinated, remember the influence you have around you. Remember the people that are your friends and your family may not have made that choice and you have the opportunity to encourage them to educate, to inform and to motivate. And that that grassroots struggle is gonna to continue to help us. Uh, please undertake uh, to do that in your area of influence. Uh, doing your part to get vaccinated and to encourage others to do it is how we're gonna get through this together. Thank you. Look forward to your questions. You know, so we've uh, we considered all sort of all possibilities of where we want to uh, mandate uh, uh, vaccines, um, you know, or the testing. Um, you know, as of right now, we, we've seen the. Um, the, the adverse effects of being out of school uh, on children uh, and so uh, as of right now we are strongly recommending that all uh, the eligible children be vaccinated. Right now we're not making that a, uh, a mandate um, but uh, if we see widespread community transmission, if we see outbreaks in schools, um, we, uh, you know, we need to continue to revisit that. They went quite far with the, where you can go with if you're fully vaccinated. How far are we extending privileges for people? Um, where is this going to extend to? Well, I'll, I'll just say Brent's going to announce more detail here. We're in discussion right now with a number of uh, interested stakeholders. Obviously, this has an impact on everybody, and so it's important to uh, do that outreach, and we have been doing that throughout the pandemic. We'll continue to. So the details will be announced, I think, Thursday or Friday of this week on that. But it would be my view that it makes sense to motivate people and encourage people and reward people when they uh, have taken the steps they need to to protect themselves. They're protecting others, too. So as far as the um, uh, the order on expanding the, the vaccine passport use and the mandatory mass, we'll, we'll have more details on that uh, later this week on when, when that will come in. How many teachers, healthcare providers so far have uh, received the vaccine and how many more do you want to receive it uh, at this point? So it's a really challenging uh, number to, to come up with because we don't have uh, mandatory reporting up until uh, you know going forward so we don't have uh, uh, definite answers to that we know that we have you know 80% uh, overall of eligible people uh, with at least that one dose and so um, it, it, it's likely that that's in and around that number but we'll be getting uh, more and more information on that as, as time progresses. I still allow the option for testing and not just mandate, actual mandate, actually mandated. 
medical jurisdiction and I'm aware of that has made mandatory vaccine a condition of employment in, in government or private sector. Um, but we, we are obviously strongly encouraging uh, those vaccines and, uh, to be pursued by everyone as the best way to get through this thing. Um, and uh, we have taken steps throughout this pandemic to move arguably faster in terms of restrictions than other jurisdictions in advance of the situation worsening. Here, here in Manitoba right now, I just got the updated numbers on weekly cases, and I don't know if this graph's gonna work very well here, but I'll just say uh, the darker the shade of blue, the worse your situation you're in. Manitoba is an island, okay? So our case numbers uh, up to date, average rate of case per 100,000 is 17. Saskatchewan is 92. We're not taking that as a victory lap. We're taking this as an indication we're not an island. We've seen this movie before. We don't want to see it again. We were ahead of most other jurisdictions. Uh, uh, we delayed the onset of, uh, of uh, COVID and the second wave and the third wave more than most other jurisdictions, but we got hit harder than everybody else, in part, I suppose, because of the delay. We need to take action now, and this is preemptive, yes, but it's, and it's cautious, but it needs to be done. Just to carry on, 92 Saskatchewan, 17 Manitoba, 105 Alberta, 17 Manitoba, 80 BC, 17 Manitoba, and those numbers in our neighboring three provinces to the west have shot up in the last uh, month. So we're seeing what's happening in other jurisdictions. Ontario at 28 right now, but again, the numbers are accelerating. 36 in Quebec and higher in the territory. So <clears throat> just to give that indication, on any graph that looks at case numbers, and if you take a look at every province's graphs right now, you will see a significant uptick to the right on that graph in terms of case numbers. The only place you don't is Manitoba. That doesn't mean it's going to stay down. And I'm, I'm saying, and we're saying today, we know that it's going to come up. It's just a question of if, can we keep that thing from being as steep as it was in two and three. And, and sorry, just to finish, Meg, and then we'll take questions, but the, the projections are what are really hitting me, I have to say. And you're going to see the modeling here later today on where uh, our experts are, are showing us. BC is projecting t up to 10,000 cases a day within weeks. 10,000 cases a day, I repeat. Ontario, 7,000 by mid-October. That's their projection. Just to put that in comparative terms, their highest weekly average uh, peak so far was 4,700. We're talking 7,000 on fourth wave. I'm saying this not to frighten, I hope, but to motivate and encourage all Manitobans to pursue getting vaccinated. That's the way out of this. That's the best protection we have. And we need people to pursue that. Saskatchewan has hit their highest COVID hospitalizations since the uh, uh, first half of June. Alberta, the daily number of new infections is up tenfold since July. Modeling projection, uh, projections have Alberta at 4,000 cases daily. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're in a serious situation. We're taking preemptive action because we want to avoid the magnitude of what we saw in that third and second wave. All of us should work to make sure that we achieve that. Dr. Rusin, are you... So, no, sorry, Sean, because I cut uh, Maggie up before. Um, for the people who have medical accommodations, will they still need to get tested three times a week? Yes, those, uh, those who uh, are not fully vaccinated need to undergo regular testing. And who will be putting the bill for that testing? Is that individual cost? So remember what uh, what we're after here is to get as many people vaccinated, not as many people going through testing. So uh, uh, and then we have some time right now to work on those those implementation type things on on the exact nature of the test we're going to use, um, how it's going to be administered and, and followed. So um, really, what we want to do is get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. When um, uh, if there are people who are choosing to be tested instead, um, we're going to have more details on the. the operation of that uh, upcoming. But you're comfortable that you can, you're talking about thousands and thousands of people who needed to be tested every week, three times, up to three times a week, confident that you can meet that kind of demand. So again, uh, our goal is to, to limit the amount of people who actually will require that.
um, uh, I think being tested uh, three times a week, seeing the, um, the nature of this uh, uh, Delta uh, variants can encourage a lot of Manitobans uh, to get vaccinated. But yes, the um, uh, as we work on uh, implementing this, we're going to have to ensure we have enough of the uh, uh, appropriate tests to undergo this type of testing. Uh, again, we don't have the specific date on that. That's going to be uh, um, announced in the upcoming days on when that will be in effect and uh, it will be shortly. What changed in the past three weeks for the mask mandate? Because you, know, you guys are pretty confident that you could lift it three weeks ago and did. Yeah, I think I think really most we always knew that the Delta variant was putting us at risk, um, and uh, we hit our vaccine targets. Numbers are very low, so we are confident with at that time the the lifting the restrictions were appropriate for our level of risk. But what you can just see happening around us in you know in Canada, it's just clear that we're going to get ahead of this now. So let's get the masks back in now. Um, let's get this uh, uh, increased use of the vaccine passport in effect now uh, so that we can um, do whatever we can to limit the effects of this pending fourth wave. Two other quick things on top of that, I think uh, the vaccine uptake numbers that had been going up relatively steadily have stalled, let's be honest. So we need to get back at it. We need to, it gets harder, you know, it gets harder as you get closer to your goal, right? It's same with fitness or business goals, I, you know, you, you, it, it's good progress, and then it gets harder. What's necessary going to be for businesses that are going to have to be dealing with um, immunization cards and sell restaurants and have issues with it this summer? You've said they are the ones having to enforce this. We don't know where exactly it's going to be, but again, it's the only going to be on businesses to enforce this. Yeah. Uh, absolutely right, and you know what? We're talking to the restaurants uh, associations all the time, but you got a choice now. You can be open and have double back, so you can be closed. So which one do you think you'd want? I mean, restaurant owners want to be open and offering service to their customers. You want to go to a restaurant and be safe there, right? So I think it's time to be frank about this. I mean, there are challenges, and our, our small business community has been supported, and we've been supportive of them throughout this entire pandemic. But our small business people are not of one mind. There's tens of thousands of people engaged in small business, and I think the preponderance of opinion is they prefer to be open rather than closed. Questions on another topic. Are, are, are you going to be Premier, are you staying on until October 30th? And if so, are you altering the legislature schedule or um, legislative agenda? You will be among the first to know. You, you, you said yesterday that you were assuming that you would be staying on for a few weeks. The other thing that's motivating this announcement today is the knowledge that we're going to be waiting longer to get children vaccinated. To me, that's a very, very big motivation uh, for what we're talking about today. Uh, we had hoped that we would have uh, that under 12 group uh, vaccinated. We had speculation earlier in the year that it would be by now, and then we were told October. Now, number, the projections we're hearing are not till the end of the year, uh, possibly earlier in the next year. My question is, if, if I understand the question, the same way all the time, so it won't change. So you're not committed to staying on until October 30th? I've been committed to public, elected public office for three decades, Steve, and I'll tell you when I'm leaving. Dr. Rusin, are we going to be seeing changes regionally? Um, I know you're still in discussions, but could we see some of the privileges for fully vaxxed different in regions that have lower vaccination rates to try to encourage some of that there, like we've seen in the Arm to Stanley and Winkler? So, you know, we don't um, uh, take any options, uh, you know, away from public health. So if we see increasing case counts in a, you know, in a region, then, then we're certainly going to consider whether we need to uh, um, enhance uh, restrictions or, or uh, use of vaccine um, uh, uh, passports in that, in that region. So you can see in other, uh, some other jurisdictions where they're taking that, that focused geographic approach. So we certainly will need to consider that. How much time do you give people? I mean, we've been, we've had vaccines for months now. We've seen really low uptake in some areas. How much longer do you give them with kids going back to school and all of these restrictions or, or privileges, I guess you should say, coming in in other, in other parts of the province? Yeah, so I think we've, um, you know, Manitobas have done well overall. Uh, right, so we've hit that, uh, you know, 75% uh, um, doubly uh, vaxxed. So, uh, so I think we're, um, 
we've been on the right path. You're right, there are some geographic uh, areas and some, uh, some other areas where we see lower uptake. And we're going to do whatever we can to encourage that, uh, that uh, uptake by, through messaging, through messaging about the nature of Delta, uh, and then through some incentives. Uh, we've had uh, some incentives in place now, and we're going to um, extend that. Like we say, this is, this is really going to be a fourth wave, very largely of the unvaccinated. Um, and so uh, those who are um, uh, doing their part to get vaccinated, to protect themselves, the people around them, um, uh, they're going to be able to, to uh, uh, do uh, you know, many more of the things that they, uh, they miss um, uh, as we move forward. You mentioned that the adjusted mask mandate is changing. However, can you ensure parents and teachers and school workers that the indoor mask mandate will be in place before back to school across the province? Yes. We're going to go to phone phone questions yeah. now, and then we can come right. come yeah. back we'll come, back. come back to these folks. Yeah, yeah. good. It's nice Thank to you. see nice to see you all here. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Doctor. First up on the phone from the Brandon Sun, Colin. Good morning. Uh, I guess it's afternoon now. Uh, Colin, what did the public health and the provincial government first start getting the sense that? the fourth wave could be this dangerous? You know, it's a, it's a tough question. I think we've, we've known about Delta for, uh, for quite some time, so we've, uh, we've been aware of it. And so uh, even though when we hit our original vaccine targets and we've uh, significantly loosened a number of our restrictions, we didn't, um, you know, ignore what was going on. Uh, we knew that at some point it was very likely we were going to have to re-implement um, some form of restrictions, some form of mask mandate. So uh, we, we now have uh, very clearly confirmed what fourth waves are going to look like in, in other jurisdictions around uh, around Canada. So um, that's why we're uh, preemptively getting getting ahead of things. When the mask mandates were lifted, I saw a lot of comments on social media from people saying that they were never going to be wearing a mask again. Um, after this, how are you going to get people to buy into a mask mandate again? Well, I mean, one is it's uh, it's a, a public health order, um, so it's a requirement. Uh, so there can be uh, um, repercussions for not wearing a mask in indoor public uh, uh, settings. Um, and then, as we you know, as we move forward, we're going to see that uh, more and more of the indoor public settings that we attend are going to be uh, requiring uh, proof of vaccination. Uh, so I think that uh, we're going to do uh, a very clear job today of showing the risks of a Delta. Uh, I think that's uh, already been shown very clearly in other jurisdictions. Uh, and so now we're moving uh, at this point preemptively to uh, reinstate the mass mandate uh, uh, amongst uh, uh, the increasing use of the vaccine uh, credentials. And we need to remember as well that the, as much as we wish that the pandemic was over, you can't wish it away or it'll be gone by now. So we have to remember that the efficacy of the vaccines is still uh, a subject of research. We have read uh, some studies that show that uh, over a period of time that the, you know, a double vax person who might have had 90% plus protection initially may see that protection erode somewhat. So it's wise with the pending threat of a, of a fourth wave for us to remember to remain cautious through this period of time because uh, we aren't invul in, invulnerable. We could uh, contract uh, or give uh, COVID without uh, um, uh, intending to, obviously, uh, and that risk is real. So it's important to remember and prepare for the worst, hope for the best. From CBC Radio Canada, Mohammed. Hello, Premier Hill, Dr. Rusin. Uh, my first question would be, what is your assessment of the community outreach immunization program in South Manitoba? Uh, is there any places where it didn't, it didn't work as expected? So I think there's been a lot of work uh, done um, with uh, the vaccine task force and one in setting up the, uh, the, the super sites and reaching many Manitobans very quickly. Uh, and then alongside of that with the outreach to, uh, to communities that might be more vulnerable or might have more uh, vaccine hesitancy. So again, we've, uh, uh, we've seen a very um, 
uh, you know, a decline in the rate of vaccinations uh, as we've uh, gotten higher and higher. Uh, but that rate has not stopped, and that's that's all the uh, hard work of the, the outreach teams. So we're going to continue to work on that and uh, continue to show the uh, you know the benefits of the vaccine. Very few people are uh, of our case. Uh, very few of our cases are fully vaccinated. Even fewer are in the hospital, and you know almost none are in ICU. So um, we're going to continue to try to get as many Manitobans vaccinated as quickly as possible to really uh, uh, decrease the effects of this fourth wave. Thank you. And um, I, I know I know that you say that you will give more details on passport vaccine uh, later this week. But for uh, vaccine cards, there were some issues for people who don't have uh, uh, Manitoba health cards, uh, newcomers, international students. Are you tackling this issue uh, with uh, with passport vaccine in the future? Are you thinking of that? So I think there's been work all along on that. So we're going to continue to try to uh, work out those type of uh, uh, details. From City News, Mark. Good afternoon. Um, wondering when we first started talking about vaccines, the idea of herd immunity was really extended. You're going to have to repeat, uh, Mark. Your signal has faded completely. Relocating. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Check one, two. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Sorry. Apologies there. Asking about herd immunity and if it's even possible given the vaccines um, diminishing in their efficacy over time and the way the Delta variant is infecting people. Can herd immunity even be possible right now? Yeah, so a couple of things with herd immunity. So herd immunity at the, at the very basic level is calculated by, you know, one minus the inverse of R naught. And so you can see that, you know, the, 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 uh, the larger the R naught, uh, the much more uh, percentage of the population need to be vaccinated. So Delta's R naught is m much higher than certainly the uh, uh, wild strain and, and higher than alpha. So, uh, so that means that our, uh, you know, the original projection of people that need to be vaccinated is, is uh, increased. Uh, again, those calculations of herd immunity assume uh, uh, even uptake throughout a population. So when, when you look that we have uh, pockets of very low uptake, then it's very difficult to achieve herd immunity because you're going to still see transmission in, in those areas. So um, what we do know is, is that the more Manitobans that get vaccinated, the quicker, uh, the less effect this fourth wave will have on us. Thank you, for you. My phone was uh, beeping in there. Also, just curious, uh, sorry if you did answer this question, but the testing that will happen three times a week, is that nasal swab? Is it a different form of rapid test? What kind of COVID testing are you thinking? So th this is, uh, we've given a lot of notice uh, to these uh, um, uh, individuals here, so we really want people to take this opportunity to get vaccinated as soon as possible. The details of how we implement it uh, in all those different sectors uh, will be coming out uh, later. And our final phone reporter this afternoon from the CHVN, Taylor. Hi, good afternoon. Dr. Rusin, are you anticipating gaps from healthcare workers who won't get vaccinated or tested? And if so, how many are you expecting and how is the province going to compensate for that? So we've, uh, you know, certainly worked with the healthcare sector closely on uh, on the various ramifications of this. Uh, you know, I think overall this is one of the reasons why we haven't made vaccine just a, um, you know, requirement for employment that you have the opportunity to be tested, uh, because of course our our healthcare system is going to be uh, under strain, uh, and so we need uh, uh, to ensure we have uh, our healthcare workers in place. Uh, so we do want them to be vaccinated, uh, but if not, then that testing is, the, is that option. So uh, numbers like that to anticipate is, is very difficult to know, but um, uh, you know, we've, uh, we'll continue to follow that real closely. Thanks. And in the third wave, a lot of Manitobans just stop following the health orders with the mentality of what they do doesn't matter. Uh, how is this going to be addressed with this upcoming fourth wave? You know, I think it's the, uh, however you want to frame it, that pandemic fatigue um, is, is real. Uh, and that's why when 
public health um, recommends restrictions or mandates, uh, they are there for a reason. Um, so it's it's why we loosened our restrictions when we could in, in August. It's why we lifted the mass mandate at that time, because at that time, the level of risk um, allowed for it. Uh, when we re-implement the restrictions, uh, it's for a, uh, a reason. And we're facing this fourth wave, and you can see the, the effects of this fourth wave. That's early effects of this fourth wave in other jurisdictions, and that's coming to Manitoba. Uh, so we're doing this preemptively um, and uh, for very clear reasons. Thank you. We now return to our in-person reporters. Are there any plans for booster shots given the concerns over the efficacy uh, with the Delta and some of the vaccines? So we are looking at that. We have a you know, clinical uh, uh, specialty table that we work with, uh, with consultants here looking at, uh, you know, if and when uh, third dose boosters may be required, uh, what the eligibility would be. And then of course we um, always want to hear from uh, the, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization as well. For the mass mandate in schools, is it going to be for all grades? Yes. And ACSJ said that um, the privileges for those who are fully vaccinated would be in place until at least January. Do you have an idea of how long or is this going to be kind of a two-week, two-week? Yeah, I think it's hard to put a, a time frame to it. We're, we're going to have to see what, uh, um, you know, how many Manitobans we get vaccinated, uh, what our fourth wave looks like, um, how that translates into strains on the healthcare system. So we won't put an end stop to it. But what we can say is that this is meant to be temporary. This is a, a temporary measure for an extreme circumstance. Dr. Risen, are you satisfied from what you've seen in health of the resiliency? ICU departments across the province to manage a fourth wave because you alluded to it earlier, sending people out of the province. I think I heard you say that it's a possibility that you don't want to see it again. I, I would suggest you had 18 months to get resiliency in ICU. We don't get it. What's gone wrong? So anyway, have you seen that resiliency built up? Well, when we talk about uh, if you frame it as resiliency, then then I don't have any concerns because the people who are working there have been uh, quite uh, quite resilient, gone through quite a bit. If you're talking about capacity, then it's uh, then it is uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, um, staffing. It's about uh, you know people uh, that are required to staff, uh, and nurses and and other uh, um, other people working there, and so that's very challenging to. Um, uh, largely increase, uh, you know, over over time. So uh, there has been inroads in that. Uh, you know, this question is probably better if to you know to shared health. They can have better details. Uh, but capacity has increased over time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it is a challenge when we look at um, uh, the strains that they've seen over the the past waves uh, and and the challenges they faced. Let's be clear: the additional capacity before this pandemic. There are additional ICU beds available that were fully staffed and equipped as opposed to ICU beds in theory that were not fully staffed nor were they fully equipped prior to our government coming in. So we increased the capacity in ICU. I don't think anybody anticipated that the pandemic would create the additional spike in demand that it did and with the intensity that it did. With that being said, uh, our teams have been on an ongoing basis have been doing everything they can to respond. And I think favorably the people who had treatment in our facilities, I think, are generally very, very complimentary of the care they've been receiving. I think one of the gentlemen said, this is going to be a wave of the unvaccinated. I don't know about your travels, but the, the, the unvaccinated and who's left over that hasn't had their shots now seem to me to be among the most determined that this is not what they want to do, like 10 plus percent of adults out there. And have, you, have you shifted gear in any way, shape, or form, or come up with a new message, or do you have something further to say to those people that appear to just don't, they don't care what you say? We used ongoing innovative approaches. I mean, we were the first province to introduce the VAX card, the VAX pass, to offer incentivization to people who are doubtful. Um, sure, there's a, there, there'll be a, gr a group. Uh, I mean, we've read various studies and polls. Uh, Leger did one that said uh, something to the tune of 5% of people in the last poll I saw uh, would uh, never take uh, a vaccination. 
But that number was much higher early in the pandemic. And that number itself is a dynamic number that's come down as people have seen or know of someone who's been infected by COVID. And when you experience that, you tend to change your tune. Sadly, that's been instructive to many people and has changed their view. Other things like the community outreach where instead of uh, Dr. Rusin and I trying to persuade people in various parts of the province to change their mind on COVID, someone in their neighborhood is talking to them, someone in their church or their community group is talking to them. There'll be a report coming out next week, I believe, on an update on those community outreach initiatives. They're working, you know, never as fast as I would like, but they're working. and. So that and things like even the, the lottery where people said, you know, I'm going because I'd like to have a shot at that lottery. Well, good. Whatever works for different people, some people doesn't work for others. We're, we're looking at dynamic ways, creative ways of persuasion. But the ultimate persuasion is this is just the right thing to do to protect yourself and others. And we need to continue to keep getting that message out to in a broad-based way. Dr. Rosen, do you the uh, current R values for COVID or mental health? We don't have a, a recent uh, one. We usually receive that uh, value from the Public Health Agency of Canada that they, they calculate over time. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were at uh, 0.6. Uh, you know, we're going to be uh, closer to one uh, right now. Is it too early to say whether announcements like last year from the universities, colleges, that are implementing vaccinated, if those are having an impact on our uptake? I think it's, uh, it might be a little uh, early. I haven't seen anything obvious uh, on that, but what, we, uh, what we're looking to, to, to see in the upcoming weeks is a, is a significant uh, increase in appointments booked. So uh, we'll uh, you know, hopefully be able to report on that. As our post-secondary minister said yesterday, we're working with the university's post-secondary institutions, community colleges very closely and respecting that they are, their, their governance rights are there, are there and they're real. And so, we're encouraging and supportive of what they're doing as well. We're partnering with them. I'm going to uh, try one more time on a different angle on this. The, you've said uh, <laughs> you, you said yesterday that um, that you're leaving the future of, of Bill 64 and other legislation to your successor. The legislature is coming back October 6, or is scheduled to, unless that changes. Your successor is apparently only being chosen October 30th. So it sounds like you have to make a decision before October 6th. And what's... Well, that's what, not a question. Well, what are, what are you going to do about <laughs> the start of the legislature and the legislative agenda? Well, I'll continue to do the best I can, as I always have since I've been elected. I've been honored to serve the people of uh, Manitoba and my constituency uh, for a long time. So I'll just give it all I got as long as I can, and then when I decide to leave, I'll let you know. And public hearing, uh, um, second reading. Not um, an easy decision. Second reading on some of the bills is scheduled for the second sitting day after the resumption. And the resumption again is October 6th. That's on your watch, apparently. Yeah, if I leave, I'll miss all that exciting work. That's right. That's what makes a decision hard. Okay. Anything else, guys? Are partially funded schools independent schools? Are they subject to the same vaccine requirements for staff? I think, uh, you know, that would be, you know, public health would be recommending that. Uh, I think it would probably have a, uh, be a question for uh, education to know the details on, on that. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you in the flesh.